Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. We are still kicking soccer balls around, but you might notice something different about these soccer balls. They're not staying on the x-axis. Uh, they are arcing upward in the y-direction as they're supposed to, and they are traveling along the x-axis, but now their velocity has a z component that's going along this axis that I have not added a ruler for, so I guess I need to make a note to add rulers in the z direction. Um, I went ahead and coded this. I want to show you where it came from because I wanted to do all my stumbling with it off camera and then uh, basically work my way back to the equations for it uh, with you. Um, so this is pretty cool. This is working in 3D. Um, so the, the way you work with angles and such in 3D is with spherical coordinates. So you have to give a, a, a vector's magnitude. So in this case, we're concerned with the velocity of the ball. So you have to give the magnitude of the velocity vector, but you also have to give two angles. You have to give the angle that it makes uh, going up into the vertical. That's what we've been calling the launch angle. But then you also have to give the angle that it makes in the XZ plane. So that's uh, the plane that we're looking down at right now. So right now that angle is one degree. So the red line and the gray line is making a one degree angle between each other. One degree, right? I do have that right. Oh, excuse me, three degrees. I thought that looked a little bit too big to be one degree. Well, either way, it's a small angle. Uh, this is a this is a three degree angle made in there. Um, so what I've done in the code to implement this is I've defined this new angle, angle two. Um, I I'm gonna try to avoid using the term planar angles and polar angles because. Um, this is being set up a little bit differently than it's set up in a typical um, upper level math or physics textbook where you measure the polar angle from the Z axis. V Python sets it up a little bit differently where Y is your vertical as opposed to Z because that's what uh, intro students are accustomed to seeing. It's they're accustomed to seeing X and Y and so when you want to introduce the Z axis to them it makes more sense for Z to be going into and out of the page. So that makes our spherical coordinate setup a little bit different but it still works out as you'll see in just a second. So here's where we're implementing uh, the, the new two angle based um, X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, the dependence on the projectile, uh, on, on the initial angle, projectile.angle, is still the same for X and Y. So X gets the cosine and Y gets the sine. Because the more angled it is in the, uh, uh, along the ground, then the greater the velocity vector is gonna be in the X direction and the less it's gonna be in the Y direction. Um, but let's not describe that by staring at some formulas. Let's go to a diagram. So here we've got the vPython axis. So we've got x going to the right, y going up, and z coming out of the screen. Um, so again, this is, a, this is different than you typically see in an upper level physics textbook. But hey, if you see it derived differently, then maybe you'll better understand the way it's derived originally. So what we've been defining so far has been the launch angle that gets made here within the XY plane. So this has been our launch angle. Um, th this is the one we've been working with. So if you think of this vector and you think about the sides of this vector, the, the, the vertical component and the horizontal component, then this X component here, the horizontal part, that's going to get the cosine because cosine goes along with the adjacent. The Y component is the opposite side, so that's going to get the sine. And again, these are both the sine and cosine of launching angle. And that's exactly what we have over here. We've got cosine of the launching angle and sine of the launching angle. But then we've also got now for the Z component, the cosine of the launching angle. For that, we've got to think about this thing. Uh, so you, you imagine taking this vector and rotating it around in this direction. So you imagine we go back this way You've taken your vector, and instead of your vector launching parallel to the x-axis here, it launches a little bit going over this way. So we have to think about what is going to change based on that and what's going to stay the same. What you can see is that the vertical component, the y component, is not going to change at all. Um, it's still going to get the sign of that launch angle because the y component doesn't care how much you rotate these red trajectories around in the XZ plane. It's still going to get the sine of the angle. It doesn't care what that uh, new angle, what the approach angle is. So what we can do is we can consider separately, 
I'll switch to a different color uh, so that we're considering it separately. We can consider separately the vector's projection in the XZ plane. So the red is in the XY plane, the blue is in the XZ plane. And now we're imagining a new angle, and I did not draw this big enough, um, that goes along this way. That's what we're now calling the approach angle, or angle two. And so if I think about this thing's components, as I go along this way, I can make uh, the Z component here, and then I can make the X component along here. Hopefully the color coding is making up for the crowding. I suppose I could zoom in. Can I, can I zoom in a little bit? There we go, that might help a little bit. Still crowded, worst resolution. Um, maybe that's not such a good idea. Well, we'll stick with it. Um, actually, let's, let's draw it along this way as well. Maybe that'll help. So what I can see here is that my X component is again the adjacent side. So the X component here, that's going to get the cosine of the approach angle. And the Z component is the opposite side, along, going along this side of the triangle. So that's gonna get the sine. Another way to think about this is that if I made my approach angle equal to zero, then my vector would be pointing along this way, just like it was before, right? That's the default case. In that case, the cosine, the x component would equal one, or the thing multiplying the x component would equal one, and the sine, the thing that determines the z component, would equal zero. So that tells me that I've made the correct choice here, because then all of the uh, vector, all, all of the, the, the vector's projection into the xz plane would be along the x-axis and none of it would be along the z-axis. I could also take the other extreme. I could take approach angle equal to 90 degrees <clears throat> or uh, pi over 2 for you mathematicians out there. In that case, the cosine is equal to 0, right? Because I have none of it going in the x direction. It's all pointing in the z direction and the sine would equal one. Again, all of it would end up pointing in the z direction. And in fact, if I change that in my code, if I change this to a 90 degree value, let's see what happens. We see the soccer balls, they're definitely missing the, the net. This is, this is, I guess, passing to somebody in desperation or just kicking it out of the field. Is that a strategy in soccer? I don't know. But I noticed that it's all going along the Z axis. None of it is going along the X axis, but the Y axis remains undisturbed. So that's pretty cool. Well, so what we get in for the uh, equations down here, we basically multiply those uh, trig functions together. So that way um, our X is maximized if both the angles are zero. Our Z is maximized if the first angle is zero and the second angle is 90. And then our Y component only cares about the launch angle. It only cares about the angle that we make uh, going up from the X axis toward the y axis. So this is similar to what you get for um, for uh, for normal spherical coordinates. Um, it's just that the, the names have been changed, the sines and cosines have been flipped around, but I hope that kind of helps with, um, uh, excuse me, I, ho I hope that helps with visualizing spherical coordinates in the way it's usually presented if you see it presented in a different way. Um, so let's see, let's try a few things. Since we got a few minutes left in our video time, um, let's try uh, uh, seeing how far out we can kick this thing and still make it in. So let's see, does a 10 degree angle work for this scenario that we've got here? All right, 10 degrees barely makes it, or, or barely misses, I guess I should say. So let's play around with that a little bit. Let's try nine degrees. Um, and uh, probably off camera, I'll make a double loop over these angles. Um, but I don't, I don't really want to bore you with all those gory details right now. Uh, let's see, we're missing at nine. Let's try decreasing to eight. And this is a scenario I think we're 20 meters from the, uh, from the goal. Cool. So you can make it within 20 degrees, uh, excuse me, eight degrees. So you've got an eight degree over here. It'll work the same way going over this way. You'll have an eight degree. And, uh, I think the vertical should be the same. So this is going from three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So three to eight worked in that case. Let's take this back down to zero. Does three to eight still work? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, so it does still work. 
There might be a little bit of a difference because technically you're traveling far. I don't know that it's going to make a huge dif a noticeable difference if we're on a one degree scale. So anyway, that's pretty cool. We've got three dimensions now. Um, kicking the soccer goal in three dimensions, I don't feel like is that terribly interesting. So uh, what I'm going to do next is work on porting this uh, uh, 3D kicking over to our football field goal simulation. And uh, we'll pick up with that next time, looking at the difference it makes in the approach angle for trying to make a field goal. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.